Section 5 of Perfumes and Their Preparation. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Perfumes and Their Preparation by George William Askinson. The Aromatic Vegetable Substances Employed in Perfumery. Part 2 narcissus latin narcissus poeticus french narcisse german narcissen blüten the blossoms of this favorite garden plant which is cultivated on a large scale near nice have a pleasant almost narcotic odor which may be extracted in various ways though the greatest part of the so-called narcissus perfumes are made artificially another species of narcissus narcissus jonquilla is frequently cultivated in warm countries for its pleasant scent but the perfumes generally found in the market under the name of extract etc of jonquil are artificial compounds nutmeg Latin, Myristica, French, Muscade, German, Muscatnus. These nuts are almost spherical in shape, the size of a small walnut, with a grayish brown color externally, and usually coated with a faint whitish gray covering, which is lime. Internally, they are reddish brown with white marbled spots. Good fresh nutmegs should be dense, heavy, and so oily that when pierced with a needle, a drop of oil should follow the withdrawal of the latter. Nuts which are hollow, wormy, and of a faint odor cannot be used in perfumery. Oil of nutmeg is used extensively in perfumery, but is rarely employed pure more commonly in combination with other strong odors olibanum latin olibanum french encens german weihauch this gum resin employed even by the ancient civilized nations of asia especially as incense for religious purposes comes from east african trees various species of boswellia fine olibanum appears in light yellow tears very transparent and hard whose pleasant though faint odor becomes particularly marked when it is thrown on hot coals in perfumery olibanum is used almost exclusively for pasties fumigating powders etc pulverulent olibanum constitutes an inferior quality and is often adulterated with pine resin opopanax latin resina opopanax the root stock of an umbelliferous plant indigenous in syria now recognized at Balsamodendron cafal furnishes a yellow milky sap containing an aromatic resin with an odor resembling that of a gum ammoniacum at least the opopanax now obtainable in the market is derived from this source true opopanax resin such as used it to reach the market formerly is now unobtainable and its true source is yet unknown opopanax oil is used in perfumery to some extent orange flowers latin flores aurantii french fleur d'orange german orangenblüten the flowers of the bitter orange tree citrus vulgaris as well as those of the sweet citrus aurantium contain very fragrant essential oils which differ in flavor 
and value according to their source and mode of preparation see below under oil of orange the leaves too contain a peculiar oil used in perfumery orange peel latin cortex auranti french ecorce d'orange german orangenschalen the very oily rinds of the orange occur in commerce in a dried form such pills however can be used only in the manufacture of liquors in perfumery nothing but the oil from the fresh rinds is employed and this is generally obtained by pressure origanum see marjoram and thyme Auris root latin radix iridis florentina french iris german falkenfürse the florentine sword lily iris florentina which often grows wild in italy but is largely cultivated has a creeping root stalk covered with a brown bark which however is peeled from the fresh root auris root occurs in commerce in whitish pieces which are sometimes forked the surface is knotty and the size may reach the thickness of a thumb and the length of a finger when fresh the roots have a disagreeable sharp odor but on drying they attain an odor which may be said to resemble that of the violet but on comparing the two odors immediately a considerable difference is perceptible even to the untrained olfactory sense auris root should be as fresh as possible this may be recognized by its toughness the great weight and the white not yellow color on fracture it is very frequently used for sachets and for fixing other odors palm oil latin oleum palma french huile de palme german palmol palm oil a fixed oil derived from elais kinensis possesses a peculiar odor faintly recalling that of violets which is easily extracted although not used thus far in perfumery personal experiments have convinced the author that the odor can be employed in the manufacture of cheap perfumes patchouli latin pogostemon patchouli french patchouli german patchouli kaut this herb indigenous to the east indies and china in appearance somewhat resembling our garden sage is used in the countries named as one of the most common perfumes many east indian and chinese goods such as cashmere shawls india ink etc owe their peculiar odor to the patchouli herb which is very productive in this respect it can be compared only with the nutmeg but exceeds even this in intensity this herb is not known very long in europe but at present it is imported in large quantities from india in commerce it occurs in small bundles consisting of stems and leaves collected before flowering peru balsam latin balsamum peruvianum French, Baume du Peru, German, Peru Balsam. This balsam, imported from Central America, San Salvador, is derived from Toluifera Pereira. Incisions are made in the bark and trunk of the tree, from which the balsam exudes. Peru Balsam is of a syrupy consistence, thick and viscid brownish red in thin blackish brown in thick layers its taste is pungent sharp and bitter 
afterward acrid its odor is somewhat smoky but agreeable and balsamic pearl balsam is often sophisticated with fixed oil this can be readily detected by agitation with alcohol by which the oil is separated but if castor oil is the adulterant this test is not applicable as castor oil dissolves with equal facility in alcohol pineapple latin bromelia ananas french anana german ananas the fruits of this plant originally derived from the east indies have a well-known narcotic odor which can be extracted from them in commerce we often meet with a chemical product called pineapple ether which will be described at greater length under the head of chemical products used in perfumery pineapple ether has an odor usually considered to be like that of the fruit but when the two substances are immediately compared a great difference will be detected pineapple ether finds quite extensive application in confectionery for the preparation of lemonades punch ices etc if the true pineapple odor is to be prepared from the fruits care must be had to use ripe fruits the unripe or overripe fruits possess a less delicate aroma pink latin dianthus cariophilus french oeille german nelkenblüthen the odor of this favorite garden plant can be easily extracted from the flowers by means of petroleum ether but the genuine odor of pink hardly ever met within perfumery the preparations sold under this name being usually artificial mixtures of other odors plumeria latin plumeria french plumeria german plumeria bluten all the plumerias indigenous to the antilles contain very fragrant odors in their flowers to the best of our knowledge these odors have not yet been extracted from the flowers and all the perfumes sold under this name sometimes also called frangipani are merely combinations of different odors Resida, mignonette, Latin, Reseda odorata, French, mignonette, German, Reseda. This herbaceous plant, probably indigenous to northern Africa, but long domesticated in Europe and cultivated in gardens, is well known for its refreshing odor the latter however is very difficult to extract and is yielded only to the method of observation en fleurage the true odor of resida owing to the mode of its preparation is very expensive and for this reason nearly all perfumes sold under this name are produced from other aromatic substances rhodium latin lignum rodii french bois de rose german rosenholz this is derived from two climbing plants convolvulus escoparius and convolvulus floridus indigenous to the canary islands and is the root wood of these plants its odor resembles that of the rose and the wood is frequently used for cheap sachets and for the extraction of the contained essential oil which was formerly before oil of rose geranium was made on the large scale employed for the adulteration of genuine oil of rose rose latin rosa french 
rose german rosenblüten horticulture has produced innumerable varieties from wild species of roses which differ in size form color as well as in odor we instance here only the various odors exhaled by tea roses and moss roses accordingly perfumers likewise distinguish different odors of roses cultivated on a large scale exclusively for the ex extraction of the essential oil we find different varieties of roses in india in european turkey rosa damascena in persia and in southern france in this country united states too oil of roses could be manufactured with advantage the wild rose sweet briar french eglantine possesses a delicate but very fugitive odor and therefore the perfume sold as wild rose is usually prepared from other substances with the addition of oil of roses the same remark applies to the odor called white rose and to those sold as tea rose moss rose etc rosemary latin rosmarinus officinalis french romarin german rosmarin this plant indigenous to southern and central europe contains pretty large quantities of an aromatic oil in its leaves and flowers the oil has a refreshing odor and therefore is frequently added in small amounts to fine perfumes rue latin ruta graveolens french hue german haut this plant cultivated in our gardens and also growing wild here has long been employed for its strong odor in perfumery rue in a dry state as well as its oil is occasionally used sage latin salvia officinalis french sauge german zalbai all varieties of sage the one named being found most frequently growing wild in the meadows of southern europe and extensively cultivated in europe and in this country possess a very agreeable refreshing odor which adheres for a long time even to the dried leaves these are therefore very suitable for sachets tooth powders etc santa wood latin santalum album french santal german santal holz the tree from which this wood is derived is indigenous to eastern asia to the sunda islands the wood is soft very fragrant and is also erroneously called sandal wood the latter is of a dark reddish brown color not fragrant and is derived from pterocarpus santalinus a tree indigenous to southern india and the philippine islands it is of value to the dyer and the cabinet maker but to the perfumer only for coloring some tinctures for the purposes of perfumery use can be made only of santal wood white or yellow santal wood which possesses a very pleasant odor resembling that of oil of rose formerly essential oil of santal was employed for the adulteration of oil of rose white and yellow santal wood comes from the same tree the former from the smaller trunks of santalum album sassafras latin lignum 
sassafras french sassafra german sassafrasholz sassafras wood derived from the root of the american tree sassafras officinalis appears in commerce in large bundles it has a strong peculiar odor in the bark of the root the odor is even more marked in the european drug trade sassafras sawdust is also met with but this is not rarely mixed with pine sawdust which has been moistened with fennel water and again dried in perfumery sassafras wood is less used for the manufacture of volatile odors than for scenting soap since the principal constituent of oil of sassafras viz saffron has been found to be contained in the crude oil of japanese camphor the latter has to a very large extent taken the place of the natural oil spikenard latin nardostachis jamatansi french spikenard german nardenkaut this plant belonging to the order of valeriana which generally possess a strong and more or less unpleasant odor forms one of the main objects of oriental perfumery in the east indies where the plant grows wild on the mountains the odor is held about in the same estimation as that of roses violets etc in europe spikenard was probably known to the ancient babylonians and assyrians for in the bible in the song of solomon we find this plant repeatedly mentioned and praised for its pleasant odor as the odor of spikenard is not appreciated in europe the plant is rarely met with in commerce all parts of the plant are aromatic but use is chiefly made of the root consisting of fine fibers which are tied in bundles the thickness of a finger star anise latin elysium semen anisi estelati french badiane german stern anise star anise occurs in commerce in the form of eight chambered capsules each compartment containing one glossy seed and is derived from a chinese tree elysium anisatum the fruits are brown woody the seed has a sweetish taste and an odor resembling that of anise outside of perfumery star anise is used in the manufacture of liquors recently a drug has appeared in commerce under the name of star anise which possesses poisonous qualities and is derived from another variety of elysium elysium religiosum while this may be of no consequence to the perfumer it is important to the manufacturer of liquors who always uses star anise for fine goods and never oil of anise storax latin styrax french styrax german storax this product which belongs among the balsams is derived from a small tree liquid amber orientalis and is obtained from the bark by heating with water and also by pressure it forms a viscid mass like turpentine has a gray color a burning sharp taste an agreeable odor and is easily soluble in strong alcohol but the odor becomes pleasant only after the solution is highly diluted storax has the peculiar property 
of binding different very delicate odors to render them less fugitive and for this reason finds frequent application in perfumery oriental storax should not be confounded with american storax which occurs in commerce under the name of sweet gum gum wax or liquid amber and is derived from liquid amber styraciflua it is quite a thick transparent liquid light yellow gradually becoming more and more solid and darker colored but is often used in place of the former though its odor is less fine sumbo root latin hadix sum bull french sum bull german moscus wurzel the sambal plant ferula sambal indigenous to turkestan and adjoining countries has a light brown root covered with thin fibers which has a penetrating odor of musk owing to this quality it is frequently employed in perfumery especially for sachets in commerce a distinction is made between east indian and bokharian or russian sambo due to the different routes by which the article arrives the latter which possesses the strongest odor probably because it reaches the market in a fresher state is the most valuable sweet almonds latin amygdala dulcis french amande douce german süß mandeln the almond tree amygdalus communis occurs in two varieties undistinguishable by botanical characteristics one bears sweet the other bitter fruits compared to bitter almonds page twenty four both are odorless and contain much fixed oil the special odor of bitter almonds forms only in consequence of the decomposition of a peculiar body amygdalin present in bitter almonds when it comes in contact with water good almonds are full juicy light brown without wrinkles and have a sweet mild taste a rancid taste characterizes staleness the fixed or expressed oil both that of the sweet and that of the bitter almonds which are identical in taste odor and other properties is used in perfumery for fine hair oils ointments and some fine soft soaps sweet flag root latin hadix calami french racine de glaiole german calmus wurzel the calamus root met with in commerce is the creeping root stalk of a plant acorus calamus occurring in all countries of the northern hemisphere and frequent in european and american swamps the root stalk is spongy about as thick as a finger many jointed and of a yellowish color with many dark streaks and dots inside the color is reddish white the odor is strong and the taste sharp and burning sweet pea latin latirus tuberosus french poids de senteur german platubs and bluten sweet pea flowers which have a very delicate odor yielded to the usual solvents the odor bears some resemblance to that of orange flowers but is rarely used alone it is generally combined with others to make it more lasting syringa latin philadelphus coronarius french seringa lilac german 
Pfeifen's Trauche Blüten. The white flowers of this garden bush have a very pleasant odor which resembles that of orange flowers, in place of which it can be used in the cheaper grades of perfumery. This plant, which flourishes freely in our climate, deserves more attention by perfumers than it has hitherto received, since it appears to furnish an excellent substitute for the expensive oil of orange flowers, as above stated, in cheap perfumes. Time. Latin. Simus serpilum. French. Tin. German. Timian. This well-known aromatic plant, which grows most luxuriantly on a calcareous soil, has an odor which is not unpleasant, but is in greater demand for liquors than for perfumes. Here and there, however, it is employed for scenting soap. Common time, Timus vulgaris, is used for the same purposes. Under the name of oil of thyme, in the English and American market is generally understood the oil of Timus vulgaris, which is largely distilled in the south of France. This oil is commonly misnamed oil of origanum. Tolu balsam, Latin. Balsamum tolutanum, French. Baum de tolu. German, tolu balsam. This balsam is derived from a tree indigenous to the northern portion of South America, Toluifera balsamum, belonging to the order of Leguminosa. The balsam, which is obtained by incisions into the bark of these trees, is at first fluid, but becomes firm in the air owing to rapid resignification in commerce it appears in a viscid form ranging from that of venice turpentine to that of colophony its color varies from honey yellow to reddish brown the taste is at first sweet then sharp it softens under the heat of the hand and when warmed or sprinkled in powder form on glowing coals, it diffuses a very pleasant odor, recalling that of perubalsam or vanilla. It shares with storax and perubalsam the valuable property of fixing volatile odors and is often employed for this purpose but is also frequently used alone in fumigating powders tooth powders etc adulteration of tolu balsam with venice turpentine or colophony is not rarely met with tonka beans latin fabe tonke french Fève de Tonka, German, Tonka Bonin, Tonka Zamen. The South American Tonka tree, Dipteryx odorata, bears almond shaped droops almost as long as the finger, which contain seeds two to four centimeters in length, the so called Tonka beans. These occur in European commerce in two sorts, the so-called Dutch and English tonka beans. The former are large, full, covered externally with a folded brown to black skin and white inside. The latter are barely two-thirds the size of the former, almost black and less glossy. The odor of the tonka bean is due to a volatile crystalline substance, coumarin, which often lies on the surface and in the wrinkles of the bean in the form of delicate, brilliant, crystalline needles, 
coumarin exists also in many other plants, for instance, in sweet woodruff, asperula odorata, deer tongue, liatris odoratissima, etc. Tuberose, Latin, polyanthus tuberosa, French, tuberose, German, tuberose. This beautiful and very fragrant plant is frequently cultivated in southern France. Its pleasant odor, however, owing to its great volatility, can never be used pure, but most always be fixed with one of the above-mentioned balsams, as has been stated in connection with several aromatic plants, tuberose could be grown in our southern states with advantage for the extraction of its odor vanilla latin vanilla aromatica vanilla planifolia french vanille german vanille the vanilla which may justly be called a king among aromatic plants is a climbing orchid indigenous to tropical america it is cultivated on a most extensive scale on the islands of reunion and mauritius largely also in mexico and in some other countries the agreeable odor is present in the fruit these form three lobed capsules about the length of a lead pencil and the thickness of a quill externally they are glossy brown have a fatty feel and show in the depression a white powder which appears crystalline under a lens internally good fresh vanilla is so oily that it stains the fingers on being crushed and is filled with numerous shining seeds the size of a small pin's head these properties together with the plump appearance and great weight mark good qualities old vanilla whose odor is fainter and less fragrant may be recognized by its wrinkled surface the absence of the white dust the slight weight and the bent ends of the capsules fraudulent dealers endeavor to give such old goods a fresher appearance by coating them with almond oil or peru balsam vanilla de leg is recognized as the first quality of mexican vanilla like most others that of vanilla does not become pleasant until it is sufficiently diluted verbena Latin Verbena trifila Aloisia citriodora French Verven German Verbena kraut The leaves of this Peruvian plant, especially on being rubbed between the fingers, exhale a very pleasant odor which is due to an essential oil. The odor resembles that of fine citrons or rather that of lemon grass hence these two odors are frequently mistaken for each other owing to the high price of true oil of verbena all the perfumes sold under this name are prepared from oil of lemon grass see under citronella and other essential oils vetiver latin andropogon muricatus french vetiver german vetiver wurzel vetiver also called couscous and sometimes ivarancusa though this is more properly the name of andropogon lanifer see above under citronella is the fibrous rootstock of a grass indigenous to india 
where fragrant mats are woven from it the odor of the root somewhat resembles that of santa wood and is used partly alone partly for fixing volatile perfumes shavings of the root are frequently employed for filling sachet bags violet latin viola odorata french violet german Feilchenblüten. the wonderful fragrance of the march violet is due to an essential oil which it is however difficult to extract for this reason genuine perfume of violets really prepared from the flowers is among the most expensive odors and the high priced so-called violet perfumes are generally mixtures of other fine odors while the cheaper grades are made from oris root volcameria this plant volcameria inermis often cultivated in conservatories has a very agreeable odor the perfume called by this name however is not obtained from the plant but is produced by the mixture of several aromatic extracts from other plants wallflower latin Eranthus cady french giroflet german Lev Koyen Blüten, Gold Luck. The wallflower, a well known biennial garden plant belonging to the order of Crucifera, according to recent experiments, yields a very fine odor to certain substances and may be employed in the manufacture of quite superior perfumes. The preparations usually sold as wallflower however are not made from the flowers of this plant but are mixtures of different odors wintergreen latin gauteria procumbens french gauterie german wintergrün blätter this herbaceous plant indigenous to north america especially canada in the northern and middle united states where it grows wild in large quantities has a very pleasant odor due to an essential oil and a compound ether which can also be produced artificially the odor of winter green serves chiefly for scenting fine soaps ilang ilang this plant unona odoratissima indigenous to the philippine islands contains an exceedingly fragrant oil it is brought into commerce from manila owing to climatic relations it is impossible for the perfumer to procure all the above enumerated substances in the fresh state many of them he is forced to purchase through the drug trade and he should bear in mind to give the preference always to the freshest obtainable goods at times it is not possible to utilize the materials at once for the extraction of the odors and they must be kept for some time the vegetable substances should always be stored in an airy not over dry room and the material should be often inspected if a trace of moldiness shows itself the material must be worked at once since if the mold is allowed to go on the fragrance will suffer and may be destroyed altogether the aromatic substances here enumerated are those which have actually found general employment in perfumery but the list is not complete since every aromatic plant can be used for the extraction of its odor of course this is connected with some difficulties but even in the present state of our knowledge they can all be overcome when a new odor has been prepared the art of the perfumer consists in ascertaining by many experiments 
those substances which harmonize with it for with few exceptions the finest grades of perfumes are not single odors but combinations of several which are in accord even among our domestic plants there are numerous finds to be made by the perfumer and in this respect we refer particularly to some very fragrant kinds of orchids in our woods and to the delightful odor of the lily of the valley as to the latter a perfume is met with in commerce under this name but its odor bears no resemblance to that of the flower a few facts appear to us of special importance in practical perfumery many of the plants which are easily obtainable in large quantities such as the flowers of clover and trefoil the primrose the rock rose daphne cneorum danes violet hesperis matronalis and others above named have never been employed as an actual curiosity we may state that there is thus far no perfume containing the delightful odor present in the flowers of the linden tree of the robinia erroneously called acacia of the lilac etc at least not made from the plants here named end of section five Section six of Perfumes and Their Preparation. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Perfumes and Their Preparation by George William Eskison. Chapter five The Animal Substances Used in Perfumery. While the vegetable kingdom offers us an abundance of aromatic odors, the end of which it is impossible to foresee. The animal kingdom contains absolutely no substance which may be called sweet-scented in the strict sense of the term. If we find, nevertheless, a few animal substances generally used in perfumery, they should be considered rather as excellent means for fixing subtle vegetable odors than as fragrant bodies in the true sense. By themselves, indeed, they have an odor, but to most persons it is not agreeable even if properly diluted. Thus far, only five substances of animal origin are employed in perfumery, namely, ambergris, castor, arachium, musk, and civet. Ambergris, Latin, ambergrise, French, ambergris, German, ambra. This is a substance whose origin is still doubtful. Many facts indicate that it is a secretion, whether normal or morbid may be left undecided, of the largest living mammal, namely of the pot whale, Physeter macrocephalus. Ambergris is found in the intestines of this animal, or more frequently floating about in the sea. The shores of the continents bordering the Indian Ocean furnish the largest amount of this peculiar substance. Ambergris is a grayish-white fatty substance which occurs in commerce in pieces of various sizes. Those as large as a fist are rare, of a penetrating, decidedly disagreeable odor. It is soluble in alcohol, and when properly diluted the odor becomes pleasant, and it is so permanent that a piece of linen moistened with it smells of it even after having been washed with soap. By itself ambergris is not much used. It finds its chief application in combination with other odors, or as an addition to some perfumes in order to make them lasting. Castor. Latin. Castorium. French. Castorium. German. Castorium. This is a secretion of the beaver, castor fiber. It accumulates in two pear-shaped bags on the abdomen of the animal, both male and female. The hunters remove these bags from the body of the dead animal, and in this form they are brought into commerce. These sacks are the length of a finger, at the thickest point the diameter of a thumb, and contain a greasy mass of yellowish-brown, reddish-brown, or blackish color, according to the nourishment of the animal. This mass constitutes castor. It has a strong disagreeable odor, a bitter balsamic taste, becomes soft when heated, is combustible, 
and almost entirely soluble in alcohol. It is probable that this secretion in its composition has some relation to the nourishment of the beavers which feed by preference on resinous vegetable substances. In commerce, Canadian and Siberian castor are distinguished. The latter is more valuable and has almost disappeared from the market. It possesses a peculiar tarry Russian leather odor, probably due to a substance present in birch bark, upon which the Siberian animals feed almost exclusively. Canadian castor has an odor more nearly resembling pine rosin. In perfumery, castor is rarely used, usually only for fixing other odors. Hydracium. The substance occurring in commerce under this name, the excrement of an animal found in Cape Land, the rock badger or rock rabbit, Hyrax capensis, is very similar in its properties to castor, and according to comparative experiments made by us can be used in place of the latter. Musk. Latin. Moscus. French. Musk. German. Moscus. Of animal substances, musk is most frequently used in perfumery and possesses the most agreeable odor of them all. Moreover, the odor of musk is the most intense that we know, actually imponderable quantities of it being sufficient to impart to a large body of air the strong odor of musk. This substance is derived from a deer which attains the size of a small goat and, like the chamois of the Alps, lives on the highest mountains of the Himalayas. Only the male animal, Moschus muscifers, produces musk, which is secreted in a sac or rather gland near the sexual organ. Musk being subject to the worst adulterations owing to its high price, we append a description of the substance as well as of the sac or bag in which it appears in commerce. The musk bag cut by the hunter from the body of the animal has the size and shape of half a walnut. On the side by which it was attached to the body of the animal it is membranous and nearly smooth. On the external surface it is more or less hemispherical and covered with light brown or dark brown hair, according to the season at which the animal was killed. The hair assumes a circular arrangement around an opening situated in the center of the bag. This opening, the efferent duct of the gland, is formed by a ring-shaped muscle which yields to the pressure of a pointed object, and permits the introduction of the point of the finger. Internally the musk bag consists of several layers of membrane which surround the musk itself. It is probable that the musk is secreted by these membranes, for when the animal is dissected, no direct communication of the musk gland with the body can be detected. It has been surmised that the secretion of musk bears some relation to the food. At least it has been asserted that the animals eat, among other things, some bull root with great avidity and this root, it will be remembered, has a very intense odor of musk. However, though this appears probable at first sight, it is contradicted by the fact that the females and the young males likewise eat the root without manifesting any odor of musk, nor do they secrete the substance while the older males produce it even when they are fed with hay only. Another fact is of interest, namely that other ruminants too, for instance cattle, diffuse a marked though faint odor of musk which occurs also in their excrements exactly as in the case of the musk deer. Alligators likewise produce a musk-like substance which has actually been made use of in place of musk for coarser purposes. The musk present in the glands differs in appearance with the season and age of the animal. Musk deers killed in spring have in their musk bag an unctuous soft mass of a reddish-brown color with the strongest odor. At other seasons the mass is darker in color, almost black and granular. The size of the grains ranges from that of a millet seed to that of a large pea. That the secretion of musk belongs to the sexual functions appears probable from the fact that it can be found only in the bags of males more than two years old. That of younger animals contains only a substance of a milky consistence, whose odor has no resemblance to that of musk. The quantity of musk present in a bag varies with the season and the age of the animal. The smallest quantity may be assumed at about six drachms though some bags contain as much as one and a half ounces. The hunters dry the bags either on hot stones or in the air, or they dip them into hot oil. In commerce, musk occurs either in bags under the name Moscus in Vesius, musk in pods, or free, Moscus in granis, Moscus ex Vesius, grain musk. According to its origin, four sorts are distinguished. Chinese or Tonquin musk, Siberian or Russian musk, Assam or Bengal musk, and finally Bokharian musk. 
The latter two varieties, however, rarely reach this market. Chinese musk, Tonquin or Tibet musk, occurs in small boxes containing 20 to 30 bags, each wrapped in Chinese tissue paper, on which Chinese characters are printed. This is considered the best quality. Assam musk occurs in bags lined with tin, which contain as many as 200 or more bags. Its value is about two-thirds that of the former. Russian musk is packed in various ways, and its worth is about one-fourth that of the Chinese. A special variety of it, of a weaker and rather urinous odor, is known as Cabardine musk. Of least value is Bokharian musk, which is of a grayish-black color with a faint odor. Musk is adulterated in an almost incredible manner. At times, so-called musk bags are met with, which are artificially constructed of animal membranes and filled with dried blood, earth, etc., and slightly scented with genuine musk. But even the genuine musk bags are often tampered with, musk being removed from the opening and the space filled with earth, dried blood, animal excrement, or perhaps pieces of copper and lead. Pure musk reacts quite characteristically toward caustic alkalis such as caustic potash and soda or solution of ammonia, and these substances are used for testing the purity of musk. If a dilute alkaline solution is poured over musk, a marked increase of the odor is observed after a short time. If the alkaline solution is concentrated or hot, the odor of musk disappears completely and the fluid develops the caustic odor of pure ammonia. Hot water dissolves about 80% of the total weight of musk. Strong alcohol dissolves about one-tenth of it. When heated in an open porcelain capsule, musk burns with a disgusting imperumatic odor and leaves a considerable amount of ash about one-tenth of its weight. Besides the above-named substances which destroy the musk odor by the decomposition of the aromatic constituent, there are other bodies whose action we do not know at present, which have the peculiar property of completely extinguishing this most penetrating of all odors. To deodorize a vessel completely which has contained musk, it is sufficient to rub in it some bitter almonds moistened with water or some camphor with alcohol. In an extremely dilute condition, musk is used for perfuming the finest soaps and sachets, and even in the manufacture of the most expensive and best perfumes, owing to its property of importing permanence to very volatile odors. In the last mentioned class, however, the quantity of musk must always be so small that its presence is not distinctly observed. Since many persons find the pure odor of musk very disagreeable, while they praise the fragrance of such perfumes as contain an amount of this substance too small to be perceived by the olfactory nerves. Civet. Latin. Civetta. French, civet, German, zibet. This substance bears some resemblance to musk with reference to its derivation and the role it plays in the life of the animal from which it is obtained. The viveridae, a class of carnivora related to the cats and weasels found in Asia and Africa, furnish this substance. It is obtained chiefly from the civet cat, vivera civetta, and the muskrat, vivera zibetta which are kept in captivity for the purpose of abstracting from them, from time to time, the civet, which is always formed anew. Civet is the secretion of a double gland present both in the male and the female near the sexual organs. Fresh civet is a whitish-yellow mass of the consistence of butter or fat, and becomes thicker and darker on exposure to the air. Similar to musk, it has a strong odor which becomes pleasant on being diluted and is used both alone and for fixing other odors. End of section 6. Recording by Philip Gould. Section 7 of Perfumes and Their Preparation. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by April Walters. Perfumes and Their Preparation by george william askinson chapter six the chemical products used in perfumery in the manufacture of perfumery a considerable number of chemical products find application in this place however we shall describe only those which are used very frequently and generally and discuss the characteristics of those employed more rarely in connection with the articles of perfumery into which they enter According to their application, we may divide these substances into several groups, namely, a. Chemicals which, without themselves serving as perfumes, are used exclusively for the extraction of odors, b. Chemicals which, while not fragrant, are frequently employed in the preparation of perfumes, 
under this head we have included also those substances which are not strictly chemical products but originally come from the animal or vegetable kingdom such as fats spermaceti and wax yet cannot be used in perfumery unless they have undergone a process of chemical purification c chemical products used for coloring perfumes so-called dye stuffs the greater portion of the substances to be here described it will hardly be the province of the perfumer to prepare himself as they are furnished by chemical factories at low prices but some of them for instance sublimed natural benzoic acid suitable for perfumery and a few other substances the perfumer should make himself in order to be sure of its genuineness therefore while in the former class it will be sufficient to describe their properties to enable the manufacturer to distinguish good quality from bad the latter class must be discussed at greater length a chemicals used for the extraction of aromatic substances for the extraction of aromatic substances from plants a number of bodies are used which possess great solvent power for essential oils and are besides very volatile or have a low boiling point these are particularly ether chloroform petroleum ether and bisulfide of carbon ether this liquid in commerce also called sulfuric ether is made in large quantities in chemical laboratories by the distillation of alcohol with sulfuric acid followed by a second distillation or rectification when pure ether forms a mobile thin strong smelling and inflammable liquid which when inhaled produces insensibility for which reason it is used as an anesthetic in surgery its specific gravity is about zero point seven two zero when anhydrous and its boiling point thirty five degrees celsius 95 degrees fahrenheit it forms an excellent solvent for essential oils resins fats and similar bodies owing to its great volatility its vapors are quickly diffused in the air and as they are very inflammable lights must be kept away from a bottle containing this substance the same remark applies to most of the substances to be presently described chloroform is prepared by the distillation of chlorinated lime alcohol and water acetone being more recently substituted for the alcohol followed by rectification of the product when inhaled it produces insensibility like ether it has a pleasant odor and sweet taste its specific gravity is about one point four nine and its boiling point sixty one degrees celsius one hundred forty two degrees fahrenheit owing to its great solvent power and low boiling point chloroform is largely used for the extraction of aromatic vegetable substances it does not take fire directly in the air petroleum ether petroleum which is brought into commerce in immense quantities especially from pennsylvania for illuminating purposes cannot be used in its crude state but requires rectification petroleum as it issues from the earth consists of various hydrocarbons mixed together some of which have very low boiling points so that their vapors readily take fire and would make the use of petroleum in lamps dangerous petroleum therefore is heated in large apparatuses to about seventy or eighty degrees celsius one hundred fifty eight to one hundred seventy six degrees fahrenheit when the more volatile products pass over and the petroleum for illuminating purposes remains in the stills a certain fraction of the volatile distillate the so-called petroleum ether is largely used in the manufacture of varnishes owing to its great solvent power for aromatic vegetable substances and its low price petroleum ether has become quite an important body for the extraction of perfumes which will be further discussed hereafter good petroleum ether is colorless has a peculiar not unpleasant odor and a boiling point between fifty and fifty five degrees celsius one hundred and twelve and one hundred and thirty one degrees fahrenheit benzene is a common name for another fraction of the volatile distillate from petroleum viz that which boils between fifty degrees and sixty degrees celsius 122 degrees to 140 degrees fahrenheit and has a specific gravity of 0 0.670 to 0 0.675 degrees this liquid which is also used as a volatile solvent for the extraction of odorous substances must not be confounded with benzene or benzol a distillate from coal tar boiling at about 80 degrees celsius 176 degrees fahrenheit and having a specific gravity of 0 0.878 the latter is not used for the extraction of perfumes bisulfide of carbon this is made by conducting vapors of sulphur over glowing charcoal or coke 
the vapors of bisulfide of carbon thus formed are led into vessels filled with ice or ice-cold water where they condense bisulfide of carbon is a colorless liquid heavier than water and very refractive it is inflammable and possesses a peculiar odor which is not disagreeable if the liquid has been thoroughly purified its boiling point is about 45 degrees Celsius, 113 degrees Fahrenheit, and it has great solvent power. At the present time, the market affords bisulfide of carbon a high degree of purity. Some manufacturers who prepare their odors by extraction may find it advantageous to make also the bisulfide of carbon necessary for it, and this is best done in Girard's apparatus, figure one. It consists of a cast iron cylinder A, two meters high and one meter in diameter. This cylinder is heated on the outer surface in an oven and two tubes, C and D, are attached to it. Tube D is connected by E with the hemispherical vessel B, which is connected by the tube I with the condenser MLK. The condenser is formed of three cylinders made of sheet zinc, which are surrounded with cold water. The condensed liquid escapes into the vessel P while the gaseous products pass through N into the chimney. The cylinder A is filled with about 1,500 pounds of charcoal or coke in small pieces, after which it is closed and all tubes are carefully luted with clay. A is then heated to a strong red heat, and at intervals of three minutes, three pounds of sulfur are thrown in through C. In 24 hours, by the use of 478 pounds of sulfur, 568 pounds of crude bisulfide of carbon are obtained. A portion of the sulfur distills over uncombined into the vessel B. The crude bisulfide of carbon contains about 12% of sulfur and other combinations in solution and is redistilled at exactly 48 degrees Celsius, 118.4 degrees Fahrenheit, in a steam-heated apparatus with a long exit tube cooled with ice below and water above. In order to obtain the bisulfide of carbon absolutely pure, which is essential to render it suitable for extraction, it is again distilled at the same temperature with the addition of 2% of palm oil. As the vapors of bisulfide of carbon are injurious to the organism, the vessels containing it must always be kept well closed. B chemical products used for the preparation of perfumes. Among all the substances belonging under this head, there is one which plays a prominent part in the manufacture of most perfumes. In handkerchief perfumes, it is one of the most important substances, as it forms not only the greatest bulk, but the perfection of the perfume depends upon its quality. This substance is alcohol, also called spirit of wine, French esprit de vin, the well-known combustible liquid formed by the alcoholic fermentation of sugar, which is made on a large scale in extensive distilleries. Alcohol is a thin, mobile liquid with an aromatic odor. The usual strong alcohol of the market contains about 94% of absolute alcohol by volume. This has a specific gravity of 0 0.820. Its boiling point is 78.2 degrees Celsius, 172.4 degrees Fahrenheit, and it congeals at a very low temperature, below negative 100 degrees Celsius. Alcohol possesses great solvent power for resins, balsams, and essential oils. These properties, however, belong only to the commercial stronger, or so-called druggist's alcohol, and more particularly to a very pure quality of it, as free from possible from fusel oil compounds, known as cologne spirit. As absolute alcohol is also necessary for the purposes of perfumery, we shall briefly describe its preparation. In order to make absolute alcohol, sulfate of copper is heated in a retort until it has changed into a white powder. After the powder has cooled in the covered retort, it is at once introduced into a large glass bottle. Over it is poured the strongest obtainable alcohol, 96% trals, which must be free from fusel oil. Then the bottle is closed airtight and repeatedly shaken. The sulfate of copper, which has lost its water of crystallization by the heat, reabsorbs it from the alcohol and again becomes blue and crystalline. Generally, four pounds of sulfate of copper are used for 10 quarts of alcohol. When white burnt sulfate of copper, after long contact with alcohol, still remains white, the alcohol is proved to be practically anhydrous. It may still contain about 2% of water. 
larger quantities of absolute alcohol are made in a copper still containing fused anhydrous chloride of calcium in small pieces the apparatus is closed and alcohol of 94 to 95 percent is poured in through a tubular the mixture often grows so warm that alcohol begins to pass over so that but little heat need be applied to make the absolute alcohol distill over absolute alcohol obtained in this way for by repeated distillations we get at most an alcohol of 96 percent abstracts water from the air with avidity hence it must be preserved in airtight vessels which should contain a small amount of anhydrous sulfate of copper which should contain a small amount of anhydrous sulfate of copper strong commercial alcohol contains varying amounts of water from four to twenty parts by volume ninety six to eighty per cent alcohol at the present time however it is always customary for dealers in this country to supply the officinal alcohol of ninety four per cent when strong alcohol is called for its strength is measured by an aerometer which sinks in proportion to the purity of the alcohol the alcoholometer of trolls or volumeter shows at once on its scale how many parts by volume of absolute alcohol volume percent are contained in one hundred volumes of alcohol the adjoining figure figure two shows trolls alcoholometer with the vessel in which the test is made the readings of the instrument however are correct only at a temperature of fifteen point six degrees celsius sixty degrees fahrenheit the so-called normal temperature at a higher or lower point they must be corrected according to the tables appended at temperature below the normal the amount of alcohol is greater than the aerometer indicates hence a percentage must be added at higher temperatures a percentage must be deducted tables for finding the true percentage by volume at the normal temperature of sixty degrees fahrenheit of alcohol of any strength when tested at temperatures below or above sixty degrees fahrenheit table one for temperatures under sixty degrees fahrenheit percent of alcohol by volume values range from twenty one to ninety seven percent number of fahrenheit degrees requiring addition of one to percentage values range from four point five to ten point one two five degrees fahrenheit explanation supposing an alcohol should be found contain forty per cent of absolute alcohol by trial's alcoholometer at forty five degrees fahrenheit the difference between forty five degrees and sixty degrees fahrenheit is fifteen opposite to forty will be found at the figure four point five for every four point five degrees fahrenheit below sixty there must be added one to the alcoholic percentage hence for fifteen degrees there must be added three point three degrees the alcoholic percentage by volume therefore is forty three point three per cent table two for temperatures above sixty degrees fahrenheit percent of alcohol by volume values range from twenty one to one hundred number of fahrenheit degrees requiring subtraction of one to percentage values range from four point five to nine point nine explanation in this case the same calculation is performed as directed under table one except the correction is to be deducted instead of added aside from the water present in it commercial alcohol is never pure but always contains small quantities at times mere traces of substances having a peculiar sometimes pleasant sometimes disagreeable but invariably intense odor which are known as fusel oils the variety of fusel oil differs with the raw material from which the alcohol was made there is a potato fusel oil chemically amyl alcohol a corn fusel oil a beet fusel oil wine fusel oil enanthic ether etc fusel oils being themselves odorous substances exert an influence on the fragrance of the perfume hence it is a general rule in perfumery to use only alcohol free from fusel oil that is such from which the fusel oil has been extracted as far as possible by means of fresh charcoal so-called cologne spirit of the best quality is as a rule practically free from it strange to say some essential oils or aromatic substances in general develop their finest odors only when the perfumes are prepared with an alcohol from a certain source 
while the charcoal treatment removes almost all the fusel oil the remaining traces suffice to act as odorous substances in the true sense of the term and to produce with other aromatic bodies a harmony of the odor which can never be reached by the use of another variety of alcohol to give but a single instance we may state that all the citron odors known in perfumery develop the finest aroma only when dissolved in alcohol made from wine and the solution is then distilled the world-renowned eau de cologne is made in this way the other aromatic substances contained in it are added to the distillate from the spirit of wine and the citron oils any cologne made in another manner or with another alcohol has a less fine odor while the citron odors require true spirit of wine for the development of their full aroma other scents require beet or corn alcohol to bring out their best odor jasmine tuberose orange flowers violet etc and all animal odors ambergris musk and civet belong to the latter class for this remarkable and to the perfumer most important fact we know no other explanation than that traces of fusel oils present even in rectified alcohol take part in the general impression made on the olfactory nerves acting as true aromatic substances cologne spirit is expensive but this should not be a reason for accepting a cheaper grade with which it would be absolutely impossible to make really fine perfumes alcohol is also generally used for the direct extraction of odorous substances from plants as will be seen in the description of the process employed in the preparation of the so-called essences or extracts for these purposes too the best cologne spirit only should be used that is alcohol which has been freed from fusel oils and redistilled for in no other way can the aromatic substances be obtained in the greatest possible purity and this is indispensable for the preparation of really fine perfumes for we do not hesitate to say that french and english perfumes have acquired their deserved reputation mainly through the great care exercised in the selection of their raw materials and especially of the alcohol used for extraction aloxin this preparation which is used in making a fine skin cosmetic is manufactured in chemical laboratories from uric acid heated with nitric acid aloxin is a crystalline colorless body which has the property of gradually producing a red tint on the skin and finds employment for this reason ammonia ammonia is a gas formed by the decomposition of nitrogenous substances but chiefly obtained on a large scale from the so-called gas liquor of gas works by itself it develops a very disagreeable odor and stimulates the lacrimal glands to secretion a fact which can be verified in any stable a solution of the gas water of ammonia liquor ammoniae possesses the same properties in perfumery ammonia is never used alone but only in combination with other odors namely in the manufacture of smelling salts french sels volatiles german reichsalz which are much in favor in england and in this country for the purposes of the perfumer the greater part of the commercial ammonia is unsuitable owing to its tarry odor pure ammonia is best prepared by heating equal parts of quicklime and powdered sal ammoniac in a retort and conducting the generated gas into water which dissolves it with avidity one quart of water dissolving more than seven hundred quarts of ammonia gas carbonate of ammonia a combination of ammonia with carbonic acid occurs in commerce in large transparent lumps often covered with a white dust of bicarbonate of ammonia which in the air continually develop ammonia and therefore always smell of it this commercial product is as a rule sufficiently pure to be used in perfumery as to its application the same remarks apply as were made under the head of ammonia oil of bitter almonds oleum amygdalae amari this is made from bitter almonds previously deprived of fatty oil by pressure which are mixed with an equal weight of water and set in a warm place the amygdalin undergoes decomposition into sugar hydrogen cyanide and benzoyl hydride or oil of bitter almonds after one or two days the mass is distilled the distillate being a colorless liquid containing besides oil of bitter almonds hydrogen cyanide or prussic acid one of the most virulent poisons from which it must be freed this is done by shaking the liquid repeatedly with dilute solution of potassa followed by agitation with water pure oil of bitter almonds is not poisonous but has a very strong narcotic odor of bitter almonds which however becomes most marked 
when largely diluted with water. Benzoic acid, acidum benzoicum. This acid, contained in benzoin, is made also synthetically from other materials in chemical laboratories. When pure, it forms needle-shaped crystals having silky gloss. They have a peculiar acrid taste, but no odor. Synthetic benzoic acid is worthless to the perfumer. In his art, he can only use a benzoic acid made from gum benzoin by sublimation, because it contains a very aromatic essential oil, for which the acid is merely the vehicle, and which can also be employed alone. As the sublimed benzoic acid is often adulterated with the artificial, we advise the manufacturer of perfumery to make his own benzoic acid, according to the following directions. The Manufacture of Sublimed Benzoic Acid About four pounds of benzoin B of the best quality is broken into small pieces and placed in a small copper boiler K, figure 3. Over its entire surface is pasted white blotting paper L, and to this is pasted a cone of strong paper which must surround the edge of the boiler. The cone ends above in a paper tube R, about five feet long and an inch wide. The copper boiler is placed in a large clay pot T, a flower pot, and surrounded on all sides with fine sand. The clay pot is heated from without by a charcoal fire. After the pot has remained about a half hour on the fire, the latter is fanned to its utmost and kept at this point for 30 minutes. The heat volatilizes the benzoic acid, the above-mentioned essential oil, and some tarry substances of a brown color. The latter are arrested by the filter paper, while the benzoic acid is deposited on the cone and in the tube, in the form of delicate glossy needles, which are very fragrant owing to the essential oil. The largest yield of benzoic acid is obtained when the temperature is raised very gradually, until finally nothing remains in the copper boiler but a brown, almost carbonized mass of blistered appearance. Borax, sodii boras, is used in some preparations. Borax forms colorless crystals which slightly effloresce in dry air and hence must be preserved in tightly closed vessels. Reddish tinted crystals are contaminated with oxide of iron and should be rejected. Permanganate of potassium, potassi permanganus, is a salt formed by fusing a mixture of manganese dioxide, potassa, and potassium chlorate, extracting the product with water, and evaporating the solution to crystallization. The salt is obtained in small, dark violet, almost black, crystals, which dissolve in 16 parts of water, to which they impart a beautiful violet color. By contact with organic substances, or others easily oxidized, the solution changes its color into green, and finally is decolorized, precipitating a brown powder. Owing to this change of color, the salt has been called chameleon mineral. As its preparation requires considerable dexterity, it is preferable to buy it from reputable houses rather than to make it. It is used in the manufacture of mouthwashes and hair dyes. The solution of the salt causes brown stains on linen and the skin. They can be removed only if the spots are immediately washed with hydrochloric, oxalic, sulfuric, or another acid. Acetic acid, acidum aceticum. Much confusion exists in the literature regarding the strength of acetic acid when merely called this name. It is safe to assume that in each country, the term applied to the acid officinal in its national pharmacopoeia as acidum aceticum. Thus, the Austrian and German pharmacopoeias understand by it an acid containing 96% of absolute acetic acid, which is practically identical with what is known as glacial acetic acid. The latter is, in some pharmacopoeias, distinguished by a special name. Acidum aceticum glacial, USP, acide acetique, French. In the present work, the author always intended the strong acid of the Austrian pharmacopoeia to be understood when no other strength was designated. Like alcohol, strong acetic acid dissolves essential oils and is used in the manufacture of various toilet vinegars and washes. Acetic acid is made in chemical laboratories by distillation of acetate of sodium with sulfuric acid or more commonly from wood vinegar. The buyer should always satisfy himself that the product is free from an empyreumatic odor which clings tenaciously to an insufficiently purified sample. Fats. Fats find extensive application in perfumery in the preparation of the so-called cuisantiques, pomades, and many other cosmetics. 
they should be enumerated among the chemical products used in perfumery because they can never be employed in their commercial form but must undergo some process of purification which is effected less by mechanical than by chemical means commercial fats usually contain remnants of the animal or vegetable body from which they were derived particles of blood and membranes occur frequently in animal fats cell bodies and vegetable albumin in vegetable fats besides these mechanical impurities fats especially if old sometimes contain small amounts of free fatty acid which suffice to impart to them the objectionable odor and taste peculiar to every rancid fat while some fats such as bear's grease butter of cacao oil of sesame and some others remain free from rancidity for a long time others undergo this change very rapidly in fact we may say that every fat which shows the slightest odor should be called rancid for pure fat is absolutely odorless we shall here briefly describe the process employed in the fat industry and by perfumers for the purification of fats animal fat such as lard suet bear's grease etc as well as coconut and palm oils are introduced into a large iron boiler containing dilute soda lye not exceeding one per cent of caustic soda and the lye is heated to boiling in the boiler is a small pump terminating above in a curved tube having a rose of a watering pot at the end the pump is so arranged as to raise lye and melted fat at the same time and to return the fluid into the boiler in a fine spray after the fat is melted the solid matters floating on top are skimmed off with a perforated spoon and then the pump is operated for about fifteen minutes the contained shreds of membrane and similar substances are completely dissolved by the soda lye the free fatty acids are perfectly combined and the fat is at the same time decolorized after cooling it floats on the surface of the lye as a colorless and odorless fluid it is ladled off and poured into tall tapering vessels which are well closed and preserved in cool cellars contact with the air especially at higher temperatures causes rancidity of the fat for every twenty pounds of fat twenty quarts of lye are used according to another process the fat is purified by being heated with alum and table salt or every twenty five pounds of fat one ounce of alum and two ounces of salt are dissolved in five gallons of water the scum is carefully skimmed from the surface of the melted fat and after it has solidified the fat is washed with water until the latter escapes perfectly tasteless and odorless the washing is a very complicated and tedious piece of work operating on a small scale a slightly inclined marble slab is taken upon which a thin stream of water is constantly falling from a tube arranged above it the fat is placed on the slab in small quantities not over two pounds and ground with a muller like oil colors under a constant flow of water owing to the expense of hand labor it is advisable to use a so-called vertical mill or chaser this consists of a level circular horizontal marble slab bearing a central easily movable axis with a cross piece upon which two likewise vertical cylindrical marble plates turn like wheels in a circle on the horizontal marble plate the fat is placed on the latter and continually irrigated with water behind every chaser is applied a marble plate with a blade which nearly touches the chasers and returns the fat displaced laterally under the chasers the axis around which the chasers run is kept moving by any available power and the laborer has nothing to do but replace the washed fat with crude liquid fats are purified as follows the oil is intimately mixed with one per cent of sulfuric acid the mixture assumes a black color the vegetable mucilage present in the oil becoming carbonized after several days rest the oil becomes clear and floats on the surface of the sulfuric acid which has assumed a black color from the presence of finely divided carbon the oil is decanted and treated in the manner above stated for solid fats with caustic soda lye heating can be dispensed with if the pumping is continued for a longer time benzoin and benzoic acid have the property of counteracting the tendency of fats to become rancid it is advisable therefore to mix intimately with the completely washed fat a small amount of benzoic acid at most one one thousandth part by weight the best way of preserving fats is by salicylic acid this is added to solid fats while they are in a melted state if oils the acid is poured in and the bottle vigorously shaken if the oil is in casks a small bag filled with salicylic acid is hung from it in the bunghole the acid dissolves in the oil and is disseminated through it and thus affects its preservation one one thousandth part by weight of the fat or oil is said to be more than sufficient to keep it perfectly fresh for years 
fats differ largely in their physical properties for instance in their appearance melting point firmness etc as we shall return to this subject in connection with the manufacture of some perfumes it is enough here to state briefly that by the addition of spermaceti wax paraffin etc fats are made more transparent and firmer a matter of importance for some cosmetic preparations chinese gelatin this substance derived from several algae species of ukiyama indigenous to the chinese sea and identical with japanese agar agar on being boiled with two hundred parts of water has the property of forming a colorless solution which solidifies on cooling owing to this property the addition of a small quantity of chinese gelatin zero point one to zero point two per cent is an excellent means for imparting to certain pomades and ointments great transparency and firmness fruit ethers are liquids which possess an agreeable refreshing odor resembling that of some fruits for this reason they are used in confectionery in the manufacture of liqueurs and also in many ways in perfumery chemically fruit ethers are combinations of an organic acid acetic butyric valerianic etc with a so-called alcohol radical such as ethyl and amyl their manufacture is connected with many difficulties and is but rarely attempted by perfumers especially as these products are made of specialty in some chemical laboratories and are furnished at very low prices and of excellent quality in perfumery the following fruit ethers are particularly employed acetic ether prepared by the distillation of acetate of sodium with alcohol and sulfuric acid is a colorless liquid having an odor of fermenting apple juice with a boiling point at seventy four degrees celsius one hundred fifty five degrees fahrenheit pineapple ether ether or huile de nanas is made by the saponification of butter with solution of potassa distillation of the soap with alcohol and sulfuric acid and rectification of the distillate it is an inflammable liquid with an intense odor of pineapple its boiling point is 119 degrees celsius 246 degrees fahrenheit it is not generally used pure as its odor needs some correction this is accomplished by the addition of a little valerianate of amyl and chloroform also in other ways apple ether prepared by distillation from valerianate of sodium with alcohol and sulfuric acid and the subsequent addition of certain correctives see below pear ether also called pear oil chiefly valerianate of amyl oxide can be obtained in large quantities from a by-product in the manufacture of potato spirit namely amyl alcohol which is carefully heated in a still with bichromate of potassium and sulfuric acid the product thus obtained has a very pleasant odor of fine pears and boils at 196 degrees celsius 385 degrees fahrenheit but the commercial pear essence is a more complex body see following table nitrous ether is a very volatile liquid boiling at 16 degrees celsius 61 degrees fahrenheit which is obtained by distillation of strong alcohol with concentrated nitric acid and rectification of the distillate it is less used in perfumery than the other fruit ethers fruit ethers owing to their low price and great strength are frequently employed in the manufacture of cheap perfumery in place of essential oils but more largely for scenting soap the so-called raspberry and strawberry ethers consist of mixtures of acetic pineapple apple and other ethers see following table which combined in certain proportions really manifest an odor nearly akin to those fruits after which they are named fruit ether fruit essences table showing ingredients usually employed for preparing artificial fruit ethers the types of fruit essences which can be produced include peach apricot plum cherry black cherry lemon pear apple grape gooseberry raspberry strawberry melon pineapple and orange these are elements which contribute to those fruit essences the table indicates the exact ratio glycerin chloroform nitrous ether aldehyde acetate of ethyl formate of ethyl butyrate of ethyl valerianate of ethyl benzoate of ethyl enanthate of ethyl salicylate of methyl sebacic acid acetate of amyl butyrate of amyl valerianate of amyl essence of orange alcohol solution saturated in the cold of 
either tartaric acid, oxalic acid, succinic acid, or benzoic acid. Glycerin. This substance, which may be called a true cosmetic in itself, as it possesses marked solvent powers for cutaneous coloring matters and at the same time imparts to the skin delicacy and flexibility, is at present to be had commercially in great purity. Pure glycerin is a brilliant, colorless, and odorless substance of the consistence of a thick syrup, which mixes with water and alcohol in all proportions, and has a slightly warm but very sweet taste. It readily absorbs aromatic substances and is used in many valued toilet articles in combination with fats and perfumes. Recently, we have succeeded in using glycerin most successfully for the extraction of aromatic substances. Oil of Myrbane also called artificial oil of bitter almonds, nitrobenzol, and essence of myrbane. This substance, which is now largely used in perfumery and soap manufacture, is obtained by the action of fuming nitric acid on benzol. The mixture becomes hot and emits masses of brown vapors, and there is formed a yellow, oily body, which is washed with water and soda solution until the washings escape colorless. Pure nitrobenzol is not soluble in water, but in alcohol or ether, boils at 213 degrees Celsius, 415 degrees Fahrenheit, and congeals at negative 5 to negative 6 degrees Celsius, 21 to 23 degrees Fahrenheit. Its specific gravity is 1.2 or a little bit over. Any oil of myrbane having a lower specific gravity than 1.2 at 15 degrees Celsius, 59 degrees Fahrenheit, is spurious, most likely nitrotoluol. Its odor greatly resembles that of oil of bitter almonds, but can be clearly differentiated from it on comparison. Care must be taken in inhaling the vapor when undiluted, as it is poisonous. By distillation, nitrobenzenol can be obtained quite colorless, and in this form is often used for the adulteration of genuine oil of bitter almonds. This adulteration, however, can be easily demonstrated by heating for a short time with an alcoholic solution of a caustic alkali, which separates from nitrobenzol a brown resinous substance, while true oil of bitter almonds loses its odor and changes into a benzoic acid which unites with the alkali. Paraffin. This substance is one of the products of the distillation of petroleum, coal, peat, and other carbonaceous sources. It is a crystalline, brittle body closely resembling wax in appearance and melting between 51 and 60 degrees Celsius, 124 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Paraffin, which is now made on a large scale for the manufacture of candles, is very useful in perfumery as a partial substitute for the much more expensive wax or spermaceti, over which it has the advantage, besides its cheapness, that it imparts to the articles great transparency, a quality which is valued highly in fine perfumeries. The addition of some paraffin to pomades renders them more consistent and counteracts their tendency to become rancid. Distilled paraffin always has a crystalline form, differing from the paraffin-like residues left after distillation of petroleum, so-called vaselines, etc., see below, which are always amorphous. Pyrogallic acid appears in commerce as a white crystalline powder made by heating gallic acid to 200 to 210 degrees Celsius. 392 to 410 degrees Fahrenheit. With iron salts, pyrogallic acid forms bluish-black combinations and precipitates the metal from silver solutions as a velvety black powder. On account of these properties, pyrogallic acid is used in perfumery as a constituent of some hair dyes. Sulfide of potassium, liver of sulfur, hepar sulfurous, potassium sulfuretum, the pentasulfide of potassium, is obtained by fusing together potash and sulfur in the shape of a leather brown mass which is soluble in water and on exposure to air is gradually decomposed with the development of an offensive sulfuretted hydrogen gas hence it should be preserved in well closed vessels an aqueous solution of this substance forms with lead or silver salt a black precipitate of sulfide of lead or silver and is used for some hair dyes starch flour amylum is prepared from various vegetables such as potatoes, rice, arrowroot, sago, etc., and when pure, appears as an insoluble white powder, which the microscope shows to be grains, consisting of many superimposed layers. In commerce, the price of the different varieties of starch fluctuates greatly. In perfumery, 
well cleansed potato starch can be very well used for dusting powders and the so-called poudre de riz in this country corn starch is preferable vanillin that is the body to which vanilla owes its fragrance is now made artificially and can be used in the place of vanilla for soaps and pomades vaseline in the distillation of petroleum there remain in the still as a residue large quantities of a substance which when purified is colorless and according to the nature of the petroleum at ordinary temperatures has the consistence of lard melting under the heat of the hand or forms an oily liquid in perfumery vaseline can be used like fat or oil over which it has the advantage in that it always remains odorless and free from acid hence it is very appropriate for the manufacture of pomades the market affords numerous varieties of this substance under different names vaseline oil and solid albaline oil and solid cosmolin etc etc spermaceti is a substance found in the skull cavities of several whales and dolphins in its properties it stands midway between beeswax paraffin and firm fats in the living animal spermaceti is fluid but after its death it congeals to a white crystalline mass of fatty luster which melts at forty degrees celsius one hundred and four degrees fahrenheit and is frequently used for fine candles as well as for other articles wax sara alba the well-known product of the bee in perfumery only bleached white wax is employed in recent years japanese wax has appeared in commerce this is of vegetable origin but in its properties resembles beeswax subnitrate of bismuth bismuth white pearl white bismuthi subnitras blanc de bismuth blanc de perles the basic nitrate of bismuth the chief ingredient in many skin cosmetics is prepared by dissolving metallic bismuth in moderately strong nitric acid and pouring the solution into a large quantity of water whereupon the subnitrate is precipitated the precipitated powder is collected on a funnel and washed with pure water until the wash water no longer changes blue tincture of litmus to red the bismuth white is dried and preserved in well closed vessels since in the air it gradually assumes a yellowish color for any sulfuretted hydrogen present in the air is greedily absorbed by the salt and the resulting combination with sulfur has a black color oxide of tin is obtained by treating metallic tin with fuming nitric acid adding the solution to a large quantity of water and washing the product which forms a white insoluble powder used cosmetically for polishing the fingernails beside the chemical products here enumerated some others find application in perfumery we shall describe their properties in connection with the articles into which they enter in this connection mention may be made of the fact that more and more aromatic substances are now made artificially which were formerly obtained with difficulty from plants beside vanillin mentioned above cumarin oil of wintergreen and some other products are prepared artificially heliotropin and nerolin are artificially prepared substances possessing an odor resembling that of heliotrope and oil of neroli respectively but not identical chemically with the natural odorous substance artificial musk bowers is playing a role at present but is not identical with the natural substance c the colors used in perfumery some articles are colored intentionally this remark applies particularly to some soaps which not rarely are stained to correspond to the color of the flower whose odor they bear for instance violet soap some articles again are used only on account of their color for instance paints hair and whisker dyes as we shall discuss this subject at greater length in connection with these toilet articles we merely state here that nowadays every manufacturer can choose between a large number of dyes of any color all of which are innoxious hence no perfumer should under any circumstances use poisonous colors this is a matter of importance with substance intended for immediate contact with the human body such as paints lip salves soaps etc all these colors will be described hereafter end of section seven recording by april walters april dot com